everyone welcome to my channel this is Osama Gazel and in today's tutorial I'll be talking about the very famous sky replacement effect or as it's called in Adobe Premiere Pro the Luma key all right so let's get started guys all right so Luma key is actually one of the coolest transitions and effects and uh, it's really commonly used nowadays but the problem is it's kind of getting overused and uh, unfortunately not everyone is able to make it visually appealing or to fit it into the context of the video uh, so somehow you just find a people using it in the sake of using it they're not trying to um, add something to the video by this effect um, and hopefully you guys didn't get me wrong I'm not trying to say that there is one proper way to use the luma key effect but what I'm trying to say is if you're thinking about using it in your video just try to find a way to make it a good fit to the entire thing because eventually you're trying to tell a story and you don't want to distract your audience or just turn them off by implementing something that would probably end up not looking cool uh, so yeah all right so the way the luma key effect works is by having two clips or two layers as you guys can see here and what you're trying to do is phasing out the upper layer in order to reveal the layer underneath and in this case what I'm trying to do is phasing out the sky in this clip with a um, triumph gate in Paris and trying to reveal the sky this celestial sky from the second clip alright so let's see how we can do that alright so first of all what I have to do is create two layers from this clip the first layer would be the triumph gate itself and the second layer must be the sky um, because if I just apply the luma key effect on this layer everything is gonna phase out and it's not gonna look cool uh, okay so in order to do that we have to use the draw bezier in order to create a mask and um, set a separate layer for each object the sky and the triumph gate let's do that and in order to do this you just have to make sure that you're zooming in properly and going as accurate as possible and of course the more points you create with your bezier tool the better results you will end up having all right and as you guys can see it's um, a little bit tedious and it takes some time so I'll probably speed forward alright so as we created our mask uh, now as you guys can see we only have the triumph gate in the first clip and if we move the cursor we can see the sky in the second clip and that's what we exactly want um, our foundation for the luma key effect to be like but the only problem we we'll probably have here is that um, we don't have the remaining part of the first clip and of course we're not gonna end up having this in our video so what we can do to avoid that problem is by duplicating our layer and in order to duplicate your layer you can just hold the alt key on your keyboard and drag your layer and it will be duplicated okay so now as we duplicated our layer we can go to the upper one and delete the mask all right and set the cursor at the point where the two clips start to overlap and it's about here then go to the upper clip and drag it all the way to the left all right so now we have the entire footage looks so nice until the point where we want to start the luma key effect the first clip is only containing the triumph gate all right but we don't need to have it that way right we want to phase out the sky and in the same time revealing the second layer underneath all right, so the way to do this is by creating another copy from the first clip drag it to the right at where the overlapping start then deleting the mask from this new copy so we have two copies that contain everything in the clip 
in the original clip the sky and the trail gate and we have the copy in the middle which is actually our original clip that still has the mask and um, doesn't have the sky anymore okay so now as we explained how to create our foundation to apply the blue Mickey effect so let's just do a quick recap for what we did so far first of all we have our original footage that included these two clips over here the one with the triumph gate and the one with this beautiful sky and um, and the first step was to draw a mask using the bezier tool over here uh, in the first clip in order to cut the part that we don't need in the first clip and this part is the sky because that's what we want to get rid of in order to reveal the sky from the second clip underneath okay then we created another copy from this first clip and set it above the first clip and why is that because we want our footage to look nice and normal from the start to the point where we're actually going to apply the luma key effect and after that we created another copy where we actually going to use the luma key effect and start phasing out this sky over here in order to reveal this sky in the second clip all right so now we're ready to use the luma key effect and in order to find it what we have to do is just go into the effects panel and search for luma key and you guys can find it under key in video effects now you can just grab it and throw it onto the second copy we created from our original first clip okay so as you guys can see luma key effect has two different things the threshold and cutoff and in order to use them you just have to stop at the beginning of where you want the luma key effect to start and fix these values the threshold and the cutoff in order to have it implemented correctly all right so at the beginning of this copy what we have to do is just um, set the threshold at zero and create a keyframe and create a keyframe at the cutoff while the value is zero then we just have to move our cursor to where we want the luma key effect to end at and i will just set it up here then change the value of the threshold to 100 and the cutoff to 102 and let's check that out as you guys can see that's what we're trying to do from the very beginning and now as we're done with the first method we can use to apply the luma fade effect in adobe premiere pro we can actually move and show you guys how uh, you can apply the same effect using a different tool all right so this new one called gradient wipe yeah you just have to grab it and throw it onto the same copy we used to apply the luma fade effect then in the beginning of your clip we're going to do pretty much the same thing setting keyframes while the value is at zero this time you know like um, it gives the same result but the dynamics are a little bit different from the luma key effect you just have to uh, change your values in order to make sure you're having the desired result then moving the cursor to where you want to end the granular wipe effect at and changing these values to 100 percent and create this keyframe all right and if you guys check that out it does pretty much the same thing as in the luma key effect but the difference is in the gradient wipe tool you have this transition softness tool and what that does is feathering the edges you guys can see these edges are a little bit rough which makes it not looking cool and in order to fix that we can just change this value the transition softness value from 0 to let's say 10% or 8% for example yeah looks so much nicer now and we don't really want these keyframes in a transition softness option over here because we just want it to remain 8% during the whole effect right so what we did here is just uh, turning off the toggle animation button and turn it back to 8% without a keyframes and that will keep the same value 8% during the whole transition 
Yeah, and it looks really nice. All right, so this is going to be the third and last method to apply the keying or luma fade effects in Adobe Premiere Pro, guys. And in this method, we're going to use something called color key, All right? Actually, you guys can see me change the footage over here. And actually, this is not a footage. Um, this is a still image. And the reason I'm using a still image is just to uh, show and explain to you guys um, when is the best time to use the color key tool rather than the gradient wipe or the luma key as we used in the beginning of this video. All right, so the color key works best when you have a strong contrast in your colors. Or as you guys can see here, the background, which is the sky, is really bright and the second object in this clip, which is the air balloon, is much darker than the sky. And in this case, I can use the color key. And um, other occasions where you can use the color key is uh, when you have the chroma, like the green matte in the background, and you're trying to key it out and replace it with another view, like uh, New York or a beach or anything you want Okay, so uh, the way to use it is by going to this eyedrop tool and Try to select the color range you want to key out or get rid of in your clip and In my case here. I will be highlighting the brightest part in this image in order to make sure that the entire area will be keyed out. Then go to color tolerance and drag it to the right and keep dragging until you get rid of the entire bright area and just have this second object, the air balloons remaining in the footage. Then you can actually go to the edge feather and as we did in the gradient wipe, you can just increase the feather in order to have smoother and softer edges around the air balloons. All right, but as I said again, guys, um, this tool is not as flexible as the previous two ones. And the reason is that you need to have this strong contrast between the colors of the different objects in your footage. Okay. All right, so uh, uh, that's it for this video, guys. Just remember that I'm trying to explain everything I know the way I learned it. And again, I'm not trying to say there is only one way to apply um, transitions and effects in Adobe Premiere Pro or After Effects. I'm just trying to explain it the way I know it. All right, thank you so much, guys, for watching. And if you have any ideas or thoughts that you want to share with me um, and help me actually better up my channel, just leave a comment down in the comment section below and um, also you can subscribe to my instagram and uh, check my recent videos and designs don't also forget to subscribe to my youtube channel or to keep yourself aware of my next videos and receive notification whenever i publish a new one all right so thank you so much guys for watching and see you next time